What is good guys, I'm here with ABR from US Northeast versus Fruit Dealer from Team Asia for World Cup Round 1. Unfortunately, Mr. Live took a nap earlier, but don't worry, there are two more games today and I'll catch them live for you guys, so we'll have you will have to smoke to chat at the side, everything. But yeah, just looking at the teams real quick, there's a team that sorry made, Screens HO. Um, it's Screens Coco with Light Clay, um, Electric Seed Halucha with SD Roost, um, Acro High Jump Kick. Barry Zaga with Coil DD, Sub Thousand Arrows, um, Psychic Tail Glow, Surf, Rain Dance, Manaphy, Sash Lead Lander with SD Explosion, Earthquake, and Rocks, and then Call Mind Shift Game Megina with Bolt Beam, and I think it was Weakness Policy. And on ABS side, I don't know this team. Um, I'm gonna guess the sets most likely. Uh, SD Glusco to help him break opposing balance. Probably a Scarf Magnezone. Every Magnezone is Scarf these days. Helps him with the pincer matchup, helps him trap opposing Kartana. Because opposing Kartana goes in versus like Clef, Tita, Glisco, and even versus Pex. So he definitely needs Magnezone here to trap that. It has to be Choice Scarf. Then it's either, it's either Mega Tower Rocks and then CM on Clef or Rocks on Clef and Bantar. I think Bantar is a bit more likely. Banta gives him um, something just that has straight out breaking power, helps him with his opposing balance, and then Rox Clef can get up Rox with a stall. And then um, just probably standard Haze Toxapex, Spedev, which is gonna help him check Megina in this game. And this is either Z move or um, Scarf Katana. Most likely Scarf though, because if it's SD Glisco plus Bantar. Then he already has enough breaking power for opposing balance or fatted for opposing fatted teams, and he needs the speed control because Scarf Magnezone is relatively slow, and the rest of his team is also slow, so he de he definitely needs Scarf Katana speed control, um, which can help revenge the mana fee. Um, potentially, um, it can outspeed the uh, Shift Gear Magiana at plus two, and if it's in range from Smart Strike, revenge it. You guys get what I'm trying to say, he definitely needs the speed control. So we see a Toxapex versus Tapu Koko lead, I assume ABS is just gonna click Scald here. Uh, Fruitila is most likely gonna get up a screen, no he clicks Taunt. Also a potential play he could've done is U-turn out Harlan to Manaphy, because um, Manaphy um, has Rain Dance, which then can get rid of um, a status if it gets Scald burned, or in this case Sludge Bomb Poisoned. So this Sludge Bomb Toxapex, which I did not see coming, but it does make sense um, now that I think about it, because uh, SD Tapu Bulu destroys these type of balanced teams, like Clef Pex get destroyed, Magnezone can't take his superpower, if it's a sub Bulu it can get up sub for free on Toxapex, so Slash Bomb I, it makes a lot of sense on this. And yeah, Bulu obviously also beats um, Tita and Glisco, so like besides Kartana and Zone, Bulu like rapes this team, so Slash Bomb does make sense. Yeah, I don't really agree with taunting there, uh, I guess he predicted the Toxapex to go for Toxic, but it wouldn't have been too too bad. Um, yeah, I would probably either reflect or U-turn on to Manaphy now. But he decides to go for a light screen. Um, that way he can lift the sludge bomb. Yeah, I understand somewhat, but uh, ABR's main attackers on this team are physical, which is which are Tita, Kartana, and I guess Girl Score. Like Magnezone, yes, gets affected by light screen. Pex and Clef, I don't count them because they're not offensive threats. I, yeah, I would have either gotten a reflect or U-turn out into Manaphy Hearts. Now he U-turns most likely into Manaphy. Uh, I assume maybe a fire of Sludge Bomb again. He does go for Scald. Okay, yeah, I guess Scald in case the. Um nah, he wasn't going Megina there. He was going Manaphy always. But he goes for Scald. So this is most likely Sludge Bomb, Scald, Recover, and Haste Toxapex. And now um, I think the taunt runs out. Yeah. So we are going to most likely see ABR spam Haze here for a few turns um, to not let Fruit Dealer set up Taglows for free. Um, Fruit Dealer spams Taglow and catches ABR there as ABR goes for Sludge Bomb, trying to get a Poison. And yeah, we could see already that the Manaphy did not have leftovers, confirming that it's the set, um, the same set like on the Sorry team, which is Waterium Z Manaphy. But yeah, now Fruit Dealer can go for Psychic, uh, might be a roll to Oko Pax, as Pax is able to munch that, ABR can go for a Haze here. And now, um, Frutila is super free to click his water stab here. There's a modest mana fee um, on the team that Sorry made. Yeah, pretty sure at this point that's the same team. Modest mana fee, you can just click Surf here. 
because Pax obviously dies at this range, um, even after the black search, I assume. And if Abia wants to pivot into Magnus Zone or Katana, they're gonna ha have to take a heavy Surf. So Surf's definitely the play here. Because you cannot like tag low and let ABR go into like Kartana for free. Even though he wouldn't really go Kartana there because Kartana is in my opinion kind of important. Because like I said earlier it can potentially outspeed plus to Megina. It can outspeed the Manaphy if it goes for Z rain then stuff like that. So Disco Magnezon um, served as a lot. And I assume the Magnezon is just going to Volt Switch out. Um, he can't really afford to go Kartana again. So I like I said because... Exactly. Fruity let us go for Surf again in case ABR wants to go into Kartana. That would like I think Surf would do like over half to Kartana. That's piss piss by death. It might even do like 80% or something. I didn't calc that, don't quote me on that, but I assume it would do like 80. So ABR goes in the packs. And ABR's gonna have to spam haze here, I think. Um obviously he needs the packs kinda for the Megina. Um in my opinion this is a hard matchup for ABR for sure. But I think he kinda has to spam haze here, he can't really I guess recover is a potential play. Frutilla surfs again, trying to catch him on the, trying to catch him on the hard katana, which is understandable. ABR reads him there, goes for sludge bomb. Um, yeah, I would have either haste or recovered, but that play works out for ABR. He gets the poison. Um, now Frutilla might want to go for rain dance to um, get rid of the poison, or he might just psychic here. Um, yeah, I think I would just psychic here. Is it Maybe I could go hard Magnus on predicting that. But I think Psychic here is a fine play. So he does go for Z move. He, for, he goes for Z Rain Dance instead of not Water Z there. That was odd. Like Water Z would have made some sense if it killed the packs. I don't know the calc on that. No, no. That wasn't the play. The play there is either regular Rain Dance or it's Psychic in my opinion. And he goes for Z Rain Dance which doesn't make much sense. Because he just let Avia recover for free. And... The speed boost doesn't even matter because the packs can just haze it away the next turn. And even if you um, get a kill with this, you then get revenge by the most likely Scarf Katana anyway. So that, I don't, not, I'm not a big fan of that play. But you know, um, I would just spam Psychic here if I'm, or Serve maybe. No, I would just spam Psychic, exactly. Uh, if I'm Fruit Dealer. ABS is obviously going to haze because um, he wants to get rid of the man if he's speed boost. And also the man if he got his spadef drop there with psychic and the haze is able to get rid of that and also covered fruit there going for um tail glow again. But yeah, psychic was obviously the play there because haze was coming out for sure. Now um Avia is most likely gonna go for recover here because he can live he can oh he goes hard magnezone. Ooh, Fruitila reads that and goes for hard surf. Okay, so Fruitila makes a good play there. Um ABR predicts him to go for either tail glow. Or um, Psychic and goes hard into Magnezone and Fruit Dealer catches him. So good read on Fruit Dealer there. I have to give him that. Now ABR is forced into Kartana here. Um, I think it's Scarf, but even if it's not Scarf, it naturally outspeeds the mana feed since he hates the way the plus one speed boost. And now Fruit Dealer is most likely gonna have to um, sack something like either the Coco or the mana feed. Probably the Coco. Like he doesn't wanna. He doesn't really wanna go to anything. Because Shift Gimigina can potentially win this game, so I don't think he wanna let that take damage. So I assume he's um, gonna sack the Coco or the Manaphy. So he does sack off the Coco to the Leaf Blade. And now he's pretty much forced to go into his Halucha because he only has a few turns of Electric Terrain. And if they run out, his Halucha doesn't get the Defense Boost from Electric Seed. And it also does not get the uh, Unburden Speed Boost and Acrobatics Boost, obviously, because Acrobatics is be way weaker if you have an item. So he has to go Halucha pretty much here. And now to me, it's pretty obvious that this Kartana has to be Choice Scarf just looking at his team, he needs the speed control if it's Z-move um, Steelium, it can potentially bop the Halucha here um, on the SD, that's a potential play for ABR um, but I assume he's Scarfed and he's locked into Leaf Blade so he's most likely gonna go to either Clef or Pex uh, probably Pex, I don't know, this is tough for ABR because if I don't know if uh, Pex can beat the Halucha 1v1 but if he goes Clef and lets Clef take damage then the Zygarde gets opened up so this is just tough for ABR um, but yeah, if I'm Fruit Dealer here, I definitely click SD because it's, to me, super obvious that the Katana has choice and forced to switch out. So he goes Toxapex, uh, Fruit Dealer just high jump kicks in case ABR wanted to stay in and was Z-move Katana, but it was relatively unlikely. Um, now Fruit Dealer is most likely gonna SD here, so um, ABR could haste predicting that or recover. Uh, it recovers in case he breaks the Acrobatics. 
And now Fruitless is obviously going to attack, breaking the haze here. Now it's probably, um, maybe has time to spam haze here for a few turns. He gets to go for recover. Now he's forced to haze again because plus two acrobatics does a lot, obviously. Um, these are like 50-50s between recover and haze, between SD and hard accruing. Um, these 50-50s are fruit dealer's favor though, in my opinion. Maybe I catches him there. Uh, I would just spam Hazy for a few turns, like two or three more, like two more times. Because if you get it correct, you get some black such recovery. And also if you can potentially go for recover on a turn where he doesn't go for SD, that puts you in a really good position as he doesn't get the read correct there. So now I assume um, he's gonna go for Haze again, breaking the SD. He just goes for Skull trying to get the burn. Does not get the burn, uh, relatively huge. Uh, so Fruitila is gonna aggro here, I think it did like 65. So ABR is gonna have to Haze, he can barely lift this. No, he gets crit, so ABR loses his Toxapex. And now the Shift Gimmigina just become a huge problem. Um, if he didn't change it to Focus Blast, then the Tita still checks the Megina, which is funny, because technically Megina should beat Tita, but it's um, both Beam CM Shift Gear on this team if he didn't change it, so Tita should be able to check it still, but yeah, without Pex, um, it can still become a huge problem if the Tita gets chipped down, also if, yeah, like Tita has to lock into Quake or Fire Punch, most likely it has Quake, I don't think it has Fire Punch because he already has a Magnezone, to trap opposing Kartanas, which means he doesn't need Fire Punch on Tita, so it's probably Earthquake. Um, what's it called? And yeah, he also doesn't need Fire Punch to hit Bulu because he has Sludge Bomb on Pex to hit Bulu. Yeah, now he's forced to go Clef and let it take the hit. I mean, he was pretty much... You can say ABI should have gone earlier into Clef instead of Pex. But, I, I don't know. Like, this was just tough for ABR. Also, um... To be fair, Fruit Dealer was spamming acro acrobatics there, so the crit was eventually gonna happen. So yeah, the crit sucks, but it was eventually gonna happen. That's just what happens when you're on the defensive, you spam haze and recover. You're eventually gonna get crit. But Ecclefable is obviously forced to Moonblast um, since he got that Skull damage. Yeah, yeah I guess that, that's why he got that Skull damage off on the Halucha, because that puts it in range um, from Ecclefable's Moonblast. So Ecclefable is gonna have to take an acro, I assume this is gonna do like 70-ish. This 81. And yeah, Moonblast is able to pick off the Halucha. So that did more than it should have done if the Clef is max defense. So I think this Clefable probably runs some sort of speed investment to speed creep opposing Clefable. And maybe it even runs some spadef investment. Um, the reason why Clefable would run spadef investment is to take um, potential Psychic from Megaladius. Because look at ABR's team. Um, Magnus and Tita get sniped by Earthquake and everything else cannot take Psychic well. If Clef is max defense, you cannot switch into Psychic well. So I... That's, I think that's what it's for, some spadef to take Psychic from Megalady, which makes a lot of sense to me. Um, because Megalady's run Ice Beam sometimes these days, so Glisco um, also can't beat it. So now Fruit Dealer is most likely gonna go into his Megiana here. Um, free opportunity to click, I think, Ice Beam. Um, you can also calm... No, I think Ice Beam is always the play because Clefable is in range at the moment. So I think ABI pretty much has to hope that he didn't change this to Focus Blast. He has to hope that it's just Bolt Beam and he has to go hard into Tita and hope that Tita can check this um, Megina. Because if he loses his Clef here, then this gets a boost and his Tita gets weakened even more and he doesn't have this as fodder. So I think hard Tita is his only play here. He obviously can't go hard Glisco on a potential Ice Beam and just lose that. He also can't go Kartana. I think Kartana um, takes like 90 or even dies from Ice Beam. So I think his only play here is, yeah, going hard Tita. So I assume Fruit Dealer just goes for Ice Beam, exactly. So Fruit Dealer gets some, some chip on the Tita here. Now, um, if this has Focus Blast, Fruit Dealer is going to click it here. If not, Fruit Dealer is going to switch out um, most likely into Landris. But if you ABR here, you have to think this through. Um, you cannot really click Earthquake here, because if Fruit Dealer goes Lando and you click Earthquake, you just you just get put in a really bad spot. Um, I mean, he's already in a bad spot because there's a full Zygarde with a berry that can set up and his Clefable is weakened, so I don't even know how he's gonna beat the, the Zygarde. But yeah, what I'm trying to say is here, if you Earthquake on the Landris, you're pretty much just in a bad position. So I think Crunch or Stone Edge might be the play for ABR. I think at this point you have to bank on this not having Focus Blast. And you have to either Stone Edge or Crunch anticipating the switch into Landris. So if Rudila does pull the switch into Landris, and yeah, ABR goes for Crunch. Now, um, 
If I'm Fruit Dealer here, I just click Stealth Rock. Because if ABI clicks Crunch again and you lose your Landris, next turn you can set up with your Megiana or with your Zygarde. Um, because it's an Intimidated minus one Tita. That's obviously Choice Bennett now confirmed from the damage. Um, did 51 to Offensive Landris. But yeah, it still has Intimidate. So that's definitely Choice Bennett. So yeah, like I said, I would click Rocks here. Um, because ABI is either going to go into Gliscor or he's going to crunch again. And if he crunches again, then you can just go Megina, Call Mind, or oh, shift, shift Gear Up. Yeah, yeah, you just go Megina if he crunches again. Then you Shift Gear Up. And then you um, can't even get revenged by Katana because you didn't take any damage yet. You also cannot get Oakwood from the Gliscor. I mean, you obviously kill Gliscor with Ice Beam anyway. Yeah, yeah. If you Shift Gear with this, and the Tita is locked into crunch, the Tita can hurt you. You set up the Clef is low, you're gonna get a Soul Heart boost. And even if Tita comes back and somehow doesn't die to Megina, it has to lock itself into Earthquake to do damage to Megina, which then lets the Zygarde set up. So yeah, I think the players definitely go for rocks. And for ABR, I don't think he can stay in with a Tita, because if he stays in with a Tita, he gives the Zygarde or the Megina free setup. So maybe it's just go Gliscor here, even though Gliscor probably can't touch the Landris that well. Frutilla goes for Earthquake and Avia stays in, and now he goes Kartana, okay. I don't like those plays. Frutilla Earthquaking, I don't like that play at all, because like I said, he doesn't have to worry about the Tita. If the Tita stays in, he gets free setup with this or this, and... If Gliscor comes out there, Earthquake doesn't do much. You can you could have rocked, even though you don't need rocks. It's still better than like you either get rocks and then you can SD the next turn on the Gliscor and explode. Or you um What's it called? Yeah, you either get rocks on the Gliscor SD into explode, or if he stays in with the Tita and crunches, you then get free setup with those. So I don't think Earthquake was the play there. Um the yeah, ABI would have lost there if if the Lando yeah like, I don't know if the Lando went for rocks there died to crunch ABI would have probably just lost to Megina or Zygarde but yeah I think it's a really hard matchup for ABI I'm not gonna try to bash him so Katana is now able to um, most likely like, choice scarf Smart Strike here because this is um, no bulk investment offensive Landris I think Smart Strike should probably be able to do half to it. And now Fruit Dealer, since he made that misplay of um, quaking and killing t the Tita, and that was at minus one, he now has to let something take a hit. Um, I don't know if he wants to let the Megina take a hit, because the Megina can win the game. But he might have to let the Megina take a hit or let the Lando go down here. So he does go hard Megina, Avia goes for Smart Strike, which is his best play in this scenario. We see it's a leftovers Megina, so I think he changed the set on the original team that Sorry made, I'm pretty sure was weakness policy. Um, but yeah, that's just personal prefer preference if you like weakness policy or leftovers or sugar on Megina on these type of teams Or Ayapapa or whatever the berries called as an option as well now ABR is forced to sack something here. Um, if he stays in with Kartana um, Yes, he can if he stays in with Kartana Ice Beam is I think a roll to Oko and I think it's an ABR's favor so huh. Okay, so ABS play here is either sack the Clefable, then come in with Glisco and click Earthquake. Or stay in and, and hope that uh, Megina doesn't get the roll. And then you click Smart Strike. Um, but I think I think sack Clef and then go Glisco is the play. Uh, Frutia's play here is always Ice Beam because um, you don't want to let ABR go hard Glisco. You on a potential um, ice, yeah. You, you, you cannot let ABR go hard Glisco and then lose your Megina, and you also cannot shift gear because if you shift gear, um, you get to it, you get destroyed by the Kartana because Scarf Kartana does outspeed Megina at plus two. But yeah, um, Ice Beam kills the Clef. 
Um, obviously, if he CM'd there, predicting the cleft, I would have put him in a great position because then he could have um, shift geared and spammed Calm Mind. And since he has leftovers, the game would have been over there. But it was not worth it because um, the Katana could have stayed in because Ice Beam is, I think, a roll to Oko Katana. And Hard Glue Score. Um, yeah, like just in case Katana wanted to stay in or in case ABI went Hard Glue Score, Ice Beam was always the play there. Now, since he didn't shift gear up, pretty sure Glue Score outspeeds this, so ABI can go Glue Score here. And I think he should be able to kill the Megina with Earthquake from this range. So I will just go Lando here if I'm Fruit Dealer. He goes Mana Fee, which I'm not the biggest fan of that play. Because Mana Fee um, would have been something that... Um, like, especially if he saved the Z-move. If he saved the Z-move, um, let's say Landris somehow goes down with... To the Gliss score. Like, let's say Landris comes out, goes down to the Gliss score. Manifi then afterwards gets a kill if he saved his Z Hydro Vortex. Because Z Hydro Vortex will either Oko the Gliss score or Oko the Kartana. So I think he definitely should not have Z Rain danced earlier and he also should not have sacked it there. But he probably still wins. So he goes Zygarde now. Um, he's most likely gonna coil here. And if ABR doesn't have SD on Gliss score, he's put in a really bad spot, but he does have SD, which, yeah. Makes sense, helps him break opposing balance team. So he has these again, I assume he's gonna... So he DDs, but he needs to DD twice to outspeed. Um, DD was the correct play because it lets him outspeed the Gliss score. Um, the Saga has like, I think 188 HP investment on the Sorry build at least. So we can see that Earthquake at plus 3 only does uh, 36. So I think the play here is Dragon Dance again with the Zygarde. And then Thousand Arrows... Um, like Didi again, he coiled, okay. I mean, coil lets him take Earthquakes better, so it's a respectable play. But if he Didi'd again, um, then he would have been able to outspeed the Scarf Katana and just clean with this Zygarde. And the only problem with Didi'ing again is you risk getting crit, but he coiled, so you risk getting crit anyway. So he subs now to get his berry activated, and also sub um, covers the Gliscor critting that turn. And now um, he's just gonna attack most likely, but. Now I think DD again is the play here, because if you DD again, you're at plus five. Um, I'm gonna calc real quick with plus five Okos. Okay, I calc it. I gave the Gliscor some defense investment and plus five thousand arrows. Always Okos. It does um, 100 to 220 um, with the Zygarde spread with 208 adamant. So um, I think just DD again here, and then you always Oko the Gliscor, and then you have two DDs, which means you outspeed the Katana, and then you just win. The only so ABS only way of winning here if this DDs again is critting, but he hard thousand arrows instead of. Why didn't he DD again? If he DD'd again, he just won. You guys could see it did 97 at plus five. I would have okoed. I did just run the call here. Yeah. So now um, he probably still wins anyway. He's obviously gonna thousand arrows to pick off the Gliscor, because um, Earthquake is probably a roll from here. And now Katana comes out. Um, Sacred Salt ignores the defense boost. But I'm still not sure if Sacred Sword can kill. Um, also, he cannot. No, no. He cannot lock himself into Sacred Sword because there's a Landris. So let's say Sacred Sword kills this, then Landris comes out. And then Landris would probably not get 2 hit KO'd, and Earthquake would 2 hit KO this. So he would lose if he locks himself into Sacred Sword to the Landris, I think. So ABS' only way of winning now uh, is Leaf Blade and crit the Zygarde, I think. Because I'm pretty sure Leaf Blade at plus 3 defense, I'm gonna calc it real quick. I'm pretty sure that doesn't do enough, so I'm gonna give it plus 3. I'm gonna type in Kartana. I'm gonna give the Zygarde HP investment, because I'm pretty sure that's what the spread is. Leaf Blade does 16 to 19 to a plus 3. And yeah, Sacred Sword would kill if I see this correct here. Um, but like I said, Sacred Sword doesn't win the game because there's a Landris in the back. So he has only plays Leaf Blade and hope for the crit. If he doesn't get it, he just loses. Does get the crit. Um, but now, um, exactly, Megina comes out, and Megina at plus one doesn't die, it lives a Leaf Blade. And I think Ice Beam, we're gonna collect this, I think Ice Beam is a roll from Megina to Oko, to Oko Scarf Katana. So this comes down to a roll after everything, like, maybe I should have lost this ages ago, I don't know how he made it so close, his opponent misplay for sure. Ice Beam does 90 to 106, so it's a 40 cent... 43.8 chance to Oko, so this is a roll in ABR's favor to 
to lift the ice beam unless fruit dealer pulls out the focus blast but i'm pretty sure this is bolt beam cm shift gear so maybe i goes for leaf blade it does 44 and let's see if fruit dealer does get the ice beam roll he does get the ice beam roll and fruit dealer takes the win um weird game weird game there were like definitely two or three plays that i didn't understand um but yeah i guess congrats for, to fruit dealer for winning this uh man really said gg um explanation mark however you say that is that how you say it? I don't know. My English is kind of bad sometimes. Like, I don't know some words is what I meant to say. But yeah, um, respectable that ABS said GG. Um, I mean, you get crit on the packs. If, if, if Fruity didn't misplay this, though, if Fruity didn't misplay this, though, he would have had this, um, he could have won this way easier. And also, um, like I said, crits can happen if you're on the defensive and keep clicking the recovery move but yeah thank you guys for watching let me know um if you like this i assume most of you prefer if the game is live recorded and you have to smoke this chat at the side but yeah like like three games or two or three hours before the game um i just wanted to take a quick nap i set my alarm but i didn't hear my alarm for some reason i guess i was super tired because i didn't sleep i didn't sleep much last night but yeah, I uh, hope you guys all enjoyed. Um, let me know um, what you think um, about the potential. What could ABR or Fruit Dealer have done different? Because um, I might have gotten like a few turns wrong analysis-wise. But I think overall the narration was fine. Um, yeah, I mean I also have to give props to Fruit Dealer for the one turn where he caught ABR. I'm not going to try to down talk anyone here um i just want to i just think that he made like two questionable plays um throughout the game but thank you guys for watching um in this group it's fruit dealer i'll show you guys real quick it's uh fruit dealer in this group let me pause it and show you never mind i can't show you it's raining outside and then my internet just died <laughs> but yeah it's fine basically this group has abr fruit dealer um I think Avon, my friend Avon, and I forgot who is in this group as well. But yeah, I'm super hyped to see ABR versus Avon, and wait, who was the other opponent in the group? I can't remember. Oh, one, one true Lycan is in this group as well. I just looked it up on my phone. I still have internet on my phone, but it's super slow. So yeah, I don't know when this video will go up since my main internet just died because of the storm outside. Um, yeah, you guys can let me know as well if you want to see a prediction video. I know Banda already made one. But I'll get my friends and call and make a prediction video if you want to see uh, mine as well. Because um, there are like multiple people uh, that I know and I obviously I'm going to root for them. Like Avon, um, my man Ultra Balls is in. He has a cool group actually, I'm really hyped to see that. And then JYT, Campbell and Eternum, they're all in my chat and they're all in World Cup. Oh yeah, I mean Cory and Black Oblivion are in my chat as well. But I don't know them that well, so... Oh yeah, Swappa. Uh, Swappa is in as well from my chat. I forgot him for a second there, my bad guy. <laughs> yeah, Swappa is a cool goo, but John Yu um, tricking and I think... I think Gypsy King. Yeah, this video is already too long. <laughs> this is um, this is a typical Darkwitch video where like um, I try to say like one or two sentences at the ending and then I just can't find the perfect ending and I just keep talking. Um, but yeah, you guys can expect, um, I think I'm a who I'm, I'm a, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm a, I am a, aka pork chop man. He's going to play later versus, I think Sonyard is some UK player. I think they're playing later at midnight my time. I'm going to record that live. And, um, a few hours later there is FLCL versus Zomok, um, which is a hyped game. Those players are more known, but I hope, um, I hope so that we're going to see some, some newcomers, some stars in this world, some new st shining stars in this World Cup. Um, players that are not that well known in the tournament scene. Um, I hope they're gonna do well. Like newer players, and I especially hope that my friends are gonna do well. Obviously, um, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Stay tuned for more content and show your support because I'm gonna try. Um, I'm gonna try my best to. Um, Upload at least every two days if I can even daily 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 would obviously be perfect. Um, I'm gonna have to see and peace out friends